All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a live stream. Sorry, it's been a while. It's uh, been a really busy summer um, between work and, and personal stuff. I've just had a lot going on, and, uh, you know, just to be honest, I have uh, played a lot of Zelda. You can see my Switch over here. Uh, I am, I think, like 170 hours deep. Uh, and, yeah, so I'm a little bit uh, tired today. <laughs> Like I, I, I was, uh, when I planned to do this live stream, it was last night and I was full of energy. And when I started this, like, then I was just realizing like, I'm kind of tired. So I'm, you got low energy me today. So, but we're still going to have a, a good time anyway. So what we're going to be covering today, we're going to be uh, continuing along our generative AI series. So, uh, in the past couple live streams, we've covered things like Lang chain. Uh, we've covered using the open AI API to emulate the chat GPT functionality. Uh, we sort of covered Whisper last time. I mean, we did cover it, but we had some struggles. I did work out those kinks uh, in case anybody's curious about that. And so now we're going to move into uh, our next one, which is image generation here. So uh, you, you all may be already familiar with this to an extent. So if you've played around with OpenAI's DALL-E models, that DALL-E is spelled uh, all caps D-A-L-L dot E. Uh, like, uh, like I don't even know what you call that dot. There's like a dot in the between there. I call it the Wally dot because it looks like the dot between like the what like the movie Wally has, but like anyway, but like I don't know how to type it simply, so I just type it doll dash e because I'm lazy. <laughs> so um, yeah, so you can do some really cool things with that. So, but it, it's kind of interesting, um, like what you uh, like how OpenAI is kind of exposing that. And, and to be clear, I don't even know if this is like the premiere service anymore to use for image generation because i keep hearing about mid journey and transparently i just not checked out mid journey um but we're we're gonna we're gonna show it anyway because it's very similar to how we've interacted with whisper and the chat gpt models to date so what uh, let's go ahead and jump into a preview of like one of the things that we're going to build be building so we're actually going to be building two applications and i decided right before the live stream we're going to combine them into one single ui like a, a left and right side thing but this is basically what we're going to be doing um and you know what? I'm, I'm even getting ahead a little bit. I, I want to tell, tell you why, one of the reasons why we're going to be doing this. So this actually here, this screen here, this is uh, the Dolly website for uh, ChatGPT, or, or from OpenAI. Um, and by the way, I, I was just looking down here. If you have any questions on YouTube or on LinkedIn, I am uh, monitoring the chat, both of the chats for questions here. So uh, anyway, what, as you can see here, this, it, this gives some examples of uh, things that the, the UI built. Some of these are pretty cool. Um, or I'm sorry, yeah, the, the dolly belt, and uh, I really like this one, um, and the cool thing, so this is like, I, I don't know how this website works though, because you have to buy credits, so you can see here, if I were to go in and try pasting this prompt here to generate the credits, uh, you are out of credits, and you have to go buy some more, okay, so to buy credits I, is 115 uh uh, credits you get for fifteen dollars. So you can do a little bit, bit of mental math there, but let's go ahead and actually do that math for you, uh, just to really hi wh highlight something here. Um, and because I'm just, I'm honestly kind of confused by it. Like I don't know if what I'm sharing here is. It, it it feels like I'm sharing a dirty secret almost, if you will. Um, so what was that? So uh, 115 credits. So one one. 115 divided by $15. So that's going to, uh, oh wait, I got it backwards. My apologies. Uh, 15 divided by 115. Okay, so that works out to be about 13 cents an image. So not terrible, but the thing that is confusing to me is, so this is the actual pricing page for using like the API. And if you come down here, so, all right, so here are the image models and you can see that, uh, so it is using Dolly and based off of the size of your image and it defaults to 1024 by 1024 and i believe that's what uh this here is as well i believe this is 1024 by 1024 um so then you can see that so what remember again the 13 cents here uh we using the api is about two cents an image and uh again it feels like i'm sharing a weird dirty secret with that <laughs> like i don't understand like i get that there's probably a little bit of a ui thing going on here that's saving yeah, it's probably saving your stuff. So it, there probably is a little bit of extra benefit. But if all you care about is the image itself and you don't care about these extra goodies, then if you built, if you use the API 
then you are saving a, a quite a bit of money. Like it's 13 cents an image versus two cents an image. Um, and, and you can see I built my own UI here that will do just that. And that's one of the things we're gonna be building today. So let's go ahead and demo this out. I still, yeah, so a computer from the style of, uh, from the 90s in the style of Vapor. So let me go ahead and click the uh, generate image button here that I built. Uh, and it takes usually, you know, about 10 seconds, I think, to generate one of these images. Um, okay, so yeah, there we go. And this is the this is a similar image. Like obviously, it was not going to produce the exact same image, that, same image that we saw over here, but we knew it was going to be close, and it was. So uh, let's go ahead and try out another one just for the fun of it. Avocado in the shape of an arm, uh, armchair in the shape of an avocado. So uh, go back to this is again my custom UI. Uh, let's go ahead and paste this here. Generate image, and it'll take a little bit. Now, Gradio does this thing where it remembers how long it took the last thing to run, so it tries to estimate how long this one's going to run. So uh, it was pretty much on target this time, but, like, just be aware, like, sometimes, uh, you know, it, it, it is not always evenly that evenly matched. Just be aware of that. Uh, but, yeah, so this is one of the things that we're going to be building today. And then the other thing that we're going to be building, I don't have – well, actually, let me, let me go ahead and pull it up really quick. I'm going to stop this demo. See, all right, and then I'm gonna do Gradio similar. And so the, the other thing that we're gonna be building today, let me go ahead and refresh this, is a thing that will allow us to upload our own image and then Dolly will create five images similar to the one that we uploaded. So I am gonna go ahead and go in here and upload a picture of my car. And I just did my uh, a picture of a car just because I wanted to uh, I wanted to see like how well it did with the cars in general, um, especially given that I work at an insurance company and I think that there might be an interest here uh, with this specific functionality. Uh, may maybe not, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm just guessing at this point. So wh wh what this is doing here though, so I just uploaded a p image of my car and it will, this one's gonna take a little bit longer because it's generating five images. Okay, and then it should show up here in the UI. Okay, so you can see uh, my original image up here. Uh, it's kind of hard for you all to see here. Let me just zoom in on it really quick. So this is just a image of my car in front of a, a brick house. That is not my house. That is my uh, parents' house. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it does a pretty good job. I mean, it's, it's a little bit wonky here on the end, but there's one, there's two, there's three. It's a little bit soft too, if you notice around the headlights, it's a little bit soft. But in general, I mean, it's you see a blue car, and it's got the general blue uh, front or like the curvy front that you're, that it, the Teslas are known for. Uh, this one got kind of messed messy here, but yeah, this is a. But you can imagine that all sorts of fun things that you could do it, it, with these sorts of things. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're going to be built rebuilding these applications but i'm going to be building them in a single ui so we're going to have the the generator off on the left and then the similar generator off on the right so yeah let's go ahead and jump into the code so i'm going to go ahead and close all these out or actually you know what let's let's start off simpler let's let's just jump into a notebook a jupyter notebook just so you can get a feel of what we're going to be building um or how this api works before we actually go put the whole uh, wrapper and stuff around it. Why will this thing not shut down? Oh, it's because I was pressing the wrong thing. All right. Any questions so far? No questions. All right. Again, you got low energy David today. <sighs> All right, live stream. I'm gonna call this live stream uh, image generation .ip -y -m -b. Okay, so some of this is gonna be a little bit of repeat from uh, previous live streams, so bear with me. So. One thing I do want to note is I do have my API keys saved in these YAML files here, and using git ignore, I am not pushing this uh, this directory up to git. So that's how I, I'm, I'm sort of pseudo protecting myself. Now, obviously, this is not the best way to store keys. If you're in a major organization, I imagine you might use something like HashiCorp's Vault to be able to store these keys and grab them out programmatically. Uh, just for our purposes, I wanted to keep it simple. So uh, what we need, so let's go ahead and import importing the necessary Python libraries. Okay, so we're gonna need YAML, of course, to import uh, the YAML files, and we're gonna need OpenAI, import OpenAI. And I think just for the notebook purposes, that's all we're gonna need. All right, uh, okay. 
All right, so those have been imported, and then we need to actually uh, grab the API keys and stuff. So I'm looking at my other screen because I'm, I'm just going to copy and paste this because this is, again, stuff we've done before, uh, and I don't really want to rehash some things. So what's going on here, again, is we are loading up the API keys that I generated as part of my personal account um, to... Uh, like then actually set them to be able to use them. Now, so I guess that brings up a point that I do wanna call out he again here is, you will have to sign up for OpenAI, you will have to provide a credit card, uh, but you can, uh, I, I highlighted this the last time, and this is not like, you you'd be actually be surprised of how much you can get by with on a little amount. So you can see here, I've just been, so this was uh, for a project I was doing with some other guys a couple weeks ago. Uh, we, we did extensive testing with Whisper and uh, ChatGPT and spent, what, like 2 or $3 dollars there. And then the, this is my testing over the last two days with Dolly. And so you can see that I've spent a grand total this month of $3.34. And you can see out of the out of 10 here, uh, now that's the one thing I want to call out here, just, just in case you are very nervous, re reasonably so, with giving your credit card anywhere, you know, what if your API key gets exposed for whatever reason? Uh, that's why I encourage you set a rate limit. Uh, where are my rate limit? Where do I set that? Oh, settings. Nope. Usage. Nope. Where do I set that at? I swore I set it in here before. Uh, learn more about the rate limits. There's like a way to do this here. Oh, usage limits. My apologies. Okay, so under billing and then usage limits, you can set the, these two limits here. So my approved maximum usage limit is $120 a month. Uh, of course, I can request an increase. Uh, or if I, this is what I choose to do for myself. So you can set a hard limit and a soft limit. So the soft limit is basically saying, okay, when I hit $5, uh, it's going to send an email to myself saying like, hey, you, you've, hit, you've hit your soft limit. Just be careful. Uh, so I've, I've, I've not even hit that. And then at $10, that is a hard cutoff. So if somebody does get your API key and runs your bill up to $10 or whatever you set in here uh, and click save, then, then that, is, that is all you will be maxed out at. So that's really nice to help be able to protect yourself. And then, of course, you will need to generate your own API key. Uh, so you can see I generated my own API key a, a while back. Uh, I could create a new one right here if I wanted to create. Uh, so uh, I'm going to call this live stream key. I'm going to I'm going to kill this instantly. So don't even try to steal it. Uh, live stream key. So I'm going to create key. And so then you could see this is the API key here. Uh, so if you are very very quick, you can type this down and you can use my API key. However, I'm going to kill it immediately. So <laughs> don't even try to type that. All right, there you go, killed. So, uh, but I still have my default API key. All right, so back to back to the notebook. All right, just checking for questions. No questions. All right, so back to the notebook. So that's what this is doing. Is it is setting the stuff to actually be able to connect to the OpenAI API, and that is uh, the the uh, like that's that's the basic stuff that we have to do anytime we inter want to interact with the OpenAI API. So you you might remember this from the one we interacted with Whisper and ChatGPT. This is all the same, which is really nice for that for the consistency. Okay, so then um, actually interacting with the API is extremely easy. All right, so I'm gonna call, uh, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna make a variable here. I'm gonna call this response. Uh, I'm gonna say, and then I'm gonna say openai.image.create. And then we can provide in a number of parameters here. So prompt, uh, prompt we can do, uh, what are we gonna do? Let, let's, let's borrow one of these from, uh, not, not this one. I wanna do, I don't know. The this one's pretty cool. The cyberpunk monster control in a control room. Try this example. What does the try this example thing do? All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in this prompt here, uh, or not. <laughs> try this example. All right. So, all right. Copy. All right. Paste. All right. Uh, all right. So then we have to provide another a couple other other parameters. So we can uh, the end parameter, that's however many images you want it to produce. So we're just going to say one. We can do more than one. Uh, default size is 1024 by 1024, so it doesn't really matter to specify this, but I'm going to call it out anyway just so you're aware of how this works. It's just a string parameter, and there's only three different options. And, in fact, again, the API documentation is pretty good here. So I would just go to API reference, images, and then this is where I got all my stuff here. So you can see the create image. So you pass it. These are all parameters that we pass in. And then we can uh, pass back a, a, a response. So here's the different parameters that we can pass in for the size. 
uh, oh, I didn't realize there was a max you can, I guess that makes sense. So, and then uh, I get, so the only other one that we're gonna be passing in for now, and we're gonna actually gonna change this here in a little bit, is we're gonna make this response format be a uh, URL. All right, so run response format, which this is the default anyway, response format equals URL. Actually, you know what, I do wanna change this to two, that way you can see why this matters. All right, so what we're gonna do here, URL, and then, and then I'm gonna run this cell. This is gonna take, I don't know, 10 seconds or so. Can you all see that? That's kind of tiny, let me make this bigger. All right, there you go. All right, so that is run. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this response object and see what it returned to us. Okay, so you can see here, uh, it's a JSON object and it gave us this data block and inside this data block is a list of two values, two URLs. So these are actually URLs that we can click on right here and it's gonna pop us into Safari and then it's gonna show us each, I don't even remember what the prompt is now. All right, so this is number one. So this is, uh, the prompt is a cyberpunk monster in a control room. So that's number one. And then we can go to number two over here, which is this guy. So you can see this is how we, I mean, this is really it. Like, and now, and, and so everything going forward from here is really just putting some fancy, uh, fanciness behind it with the Gradio UI like this, this right here, if this is all you want to know how to do, like is the image generation kind of thing, uh, you can go uh, back to whatever you were doing on your Sunday today. <laughs> go back to playing Tears of the Kingdom, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. That is a that is a fantastic game. All right. Uh, or uh, I've also restarted playing. Uh, it's been so long since I've played Pikmin, but they just re re released Pikmin one and two for the Switch. Go out and play that. Uh, otherwise, like you're not. Like, if, if you've been following along with this series today, we're going to be building Gradio UI. Uh, you know how to do that already. So this is pretty much it. Uh, like, that is all we need. So I am going to uh, – now I want to do something a little bit different here. So this is uh, – I guess the – actually, do stick around for this next piece because this piece is a little bit different. Um, so you'll notice that we, we got these responses back in the forms of URLs. Now, let's say we actually wanted to display this instead. How do we display this? Uh, in, like instead of just providing URL. So we could theoretically just c continue to have it get the URL and then use some other sort of service to actually go grab it from the URL. Or we can do what I think is the easier format and that is changing this response format from URL to base64. All right, so base64 encoding. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna just change this back to one and let's get something happier. I don't like uh, like I thought I liked that picture, but this is too not ha like let's get something. All right, teddy bear on a skateboard. Heck yeah, man. All right, photo of teddy bear on a skateboard in Times Square. All right, so let's get one of these and let's. Uh, all right, paste. All right, um, and then we're gonna keep it like this. All right, so what? How this is gonna be a little bit different is it is going to give us back. Here you'll see what it gives us back here in a second. Um, all right, so it has gotten us back, and then we have a – oh, dang it, I forgot to change this part. Oops, my bad. All right, B64JSON. All right, oops, 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 sorry about that. Although I'm curious now. I should have just clicked on this really quick to see what the it did. All right, uh, takes a bit <laughs> – nice. All right, uh, okay. All right, so let's come back to here. I can close out my calculator now. I don't need that anymore. All right, so let's look at this response object again. Okay, you can't. The reason you can't see it is because it is in a binary uh, base sixty four encoded JSON string. So uh, what we can do is we can now programmatically manipulate it a little bit to get it back into something that's workable for us. So let me. I'm, I'm looking at my bottom screen here because I know I have the code to do this. It's just that. It's not super intuitive. I did have to look this up, so don't worry if you if you don't know this off the top of your head. Uh, I'm just trying to pull. I am trying to pull this up right now. Okay, so because there's different ways to do it between uh, Jupyter Notebooks and uh, the programmatic UI. So the way that we're going to do it in the Jupyter Notebook is is we're going to import uh, from base uh, 64, which is a default library. Don't worry about having to pip install anything. Import. Uh, B64 decode, and then also another default library from IPython. Uh, IPy Fun fact, if you did not know uh, that Jupyter used to be called IPy, no, IPython 
uh, now you know. And that is why the file extension on Jupyter Notebooks is .ipynb. All right, uh, from my Python import display. Okay, so now, all right, we've imported those things. All right, now let's get the decoded image. Okay, decoded image, uh, display. Oh, did I not save that? We'll, sh we'll shoot. All right, uh, all right, well, let's, let's do the decoded images this way. So, all right, again, recall that the response object had the data. All right, so we need to do a decoded image, decoded image equals B64 decode. All right, so we need to decode that. And then, so we need the response object. And then we need, uh, from the data part there, um, this is gonna be a list of values. So we just are gonna grab the first one since there's only one in there anyway. And then we're gonna look for the B64 JSON there. All right, and then we should be able to display uh, this decoded uh, decoded image as such. Module is not an object. All right, apparently I forgot how to do this <laughs> and I did not actually write this down like I thought I did. Um, I mean, I mean, it does work though. So let, well, let me just not do it in the Jupyter Notebook and show you a different way to do it. So let's just write it out really quick. So I'm gonna do it with uh, open test.png, or I'm gonna call it bear, bear.png. Uh, and I'm gonna call it, we're gonna do a write binary format as PNG, and then we're gonna write this out, png.write decoded image. All right, so just to prove it, so now when we come back in here, there it is. So it actually is there, it's just that I can't remember how to display it in the Jupyter Notebook, but that's okay because that's not why we came here. We're gonna do it in the Gradio UI instead. Okay, so that's what we're going to basically, basically be doing for both of these things is we are going to be calling the open, even with the variation piece, the variations, so we do have to upload an image to this. And in fact, you know what, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try doing that right here. So I'm going to do this again. And so the way this works is, um, uh, I did not save this properly. Come on. Look at my other screen to make sure. So I, I'm prepared today, it's just I don't have the stuff pulled up like I should. I mean, I actually have the code written out and stuff at least, so that's good. All right, so all right, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna take the same bear image and try to get similar matches for that. So I'm gonna call OpenAI response, or I'm just gonna call this response. Response equals, all right, so this is gonna look very similar to the thing we just did. So OpenAI.image, except now instead of, what was that called? That was called create before. Now we're gonna call create variation. Uh, all right, so variation, all right, so we need to pass in an image, so let's open up um, our, our bear, bear.png in a read binary format, okay? And then we need to pass in a few other parameters. So I'm just gonna do n equals one, and then some of these are all gonna be the, like the same going forward. So the only difference here is that we are passing in an image. Now just be mindful of uh, two things with the image that you pass in. Number one, it needs to be less than four megabytes. And number two, it needs to be in a PNG format. So uh, not a, I mean, not a deal breaker because you can always take pretty much image, any image and uh, re uh, format it appropriately. So yeah, so we're gonna just, uh, did I forget a comma? Yes, I did forget a comma. Sorry about that. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the response. I'm just doing URL again here, uh, just because I'm too lazy to uh, figure out the base 64 thing right now. But we'll get to that here in a minute. Um, so, because right now this is, again, the bulk of what we're gonna be doing. We're just gonna be taking the exact same thing that we just did here and throwing it behind a Gradio UI. All right, so that is done. All right, let's look at the response object. All right, so there we go. And now, uh, it, remember, we did not provide any prompt here. We used this image almost as if it was a prompt. We just gave it something that was similar. Uh, do we have the, the real one? Uh, still, because that looks so close. I mean, it's a little bit different. You can tell in the, the wonky eye there. <laughs> I mean, so so this bear's got a little bit of like a like a like a closed eye, and this one doesn't. But otherwise, all right. Let's look at the background. So you can see like it, this almost looks like the image of a woman right here, and there is no woman here. There's there's like a guy walking. So I mean, it is pretty dang close though. Like so, it's it's pretty impressive what it can do. Now, why do you care about this? So uh, like, or why would anybody in the in the field care about this? And the answer is is to create fake 
fake images that look pretty close to the original one uh, for training purposes. And, and again, you need to be really, really careful about the context of this. But let's say, um, you know, I'm training a neural network and of images and I wanted to detect bears on skateboards. You know, there's not a lot of image images of teddy bear or let me be more specific teddy bears on skateboards and 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 times square there's not a lot if i googled that that there's there's not gonna be a lot of images of that but and if i wanted to get really specific with that you know it might make sense for me to go take two or three images of a bear on a skateboard in times square and then just use dolly to create variations of them as such just as like additional training data um i honestly would be very cautious about doing this just because number one it creates almost too close of copies like so as you saw here like so this is the real one this is the fake one and, and you even saw this with the tesla picture earlier it's very close like the position of the skateboard and the bear in the, of the skateboard is in the same in, in the same thing here so i would be afraid of trading a neural network on these images here just in for in in the uh because i'd be i'd be scared that it would always look for a bear in this precise position where it's like in front of a crosswalk and it's on a skateboard in a lower left half of the screen. So um, just a, a, like an analogy, if you're not aware of this. So somebody, I can't remember who, um, it was a, or if it was an organization or a school or whatever, they were training a, a, a learning, uh, a deep learning neural network classifier on whether like skin cells were, um, like images of skin cells uh, were cancerous or not. And they kept, and they noticed they had like a hundred percent like uh, recall and precision precision of the the model and like which is like unheard of uh and then it comes come to find out the reason that of that was is because all the images that were labeled positively of cancer had like somebody's hand like some like somebody's human hand like pointing at where the cancer is so it's not that it was detecting the image of the cancer it was just detecting the fact that it had a human hand in the picture so that's you just got to be careful with these things but anyway um it, it, like maybe there are other uses of this but we're i'm just telling you how to use it like how to use it like how, or how you, the syntax works like how you end up using this thing that's up to you all right so that is that is the api now now you can go back and play tears of the kingdom if you if you're done if you don't want to listen to anything not new we're just going to be covering uh sort of a review of things um both reviewing this and then uh, also building that new UI. All right, so I'm gonna build, let's go ahead and build this new UI. I'm gonna call this combined, uh, combined dolly ui.py. All right, so fresh, oh, don't you love a fresh Python file? Like, okay, so <laughs> I'm just being stupid now. All right, so I am gonna, uh, we're gonna import a number of different things here, so let's, Let's go ahead and start off with our imports here. And let me go ahead and close this down to make this clean, clean. All right, did I shut down everything? Uh, yes, I did. All right, cool. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, I, um, all right I'm going to close that out. All right, so let's import our stuff. So we're going to importing the necessary Python libraries. All right, so we need to import uh, YAML because that is where our API keys are stored uh, in a YAML file. Um, now we i did not display this uh but for uh for actually displaying the images in the gradio ui we are going to be using the uh, python default pill pillow library uh, i can't remember i think pil stands for python image library and then so in order to do that we need to convert the base 64 decoded image from uh that into a bytes io format and then display it using the pill library so we're going to need to import a couple of special things here so uh, actually, let me go ahead and import uh, Gradio or, or uh, OpenAI and then, oops, odd, then import Gradio as GR, alias it as GR. All right, so the things that we need. So from IO, import bytes, bytes IO. All right, so that's the, the one thing that we need uh, to actually convert the base64 decoded image into something that Pillow can use uh, from base 64 so you, you saw this already in the notebook b64 decode all right and uh from pillow um we are going to import 
image. So this is all we need. This is everything that we're going to need for to build our, our nice little UI. Now I'm just going to copy this in because I'm being lazy, but uh, this is the exact same thing. We just we, we see this over and over and over and over and over. We need the API keys. So we're just going to paste in the thing that grabs our API keys uh, and sets it up properly so we can interact with the API. So next thing that we want to do is we need to uh, set the Gradio layout and functionality uh, for this UI. So I am just going to copy. I like to use, as you can see, I like to break thing, my code my code down in like headers. So I'm going to call this. So I'm going to call this uh, defining the building blocks that represent the form and function of the of the Gradio UI. All right. So the way that we do that is with gr.blocks, because remember we're going to be using building blocks of Gradio to build this thing. I'm going to pass in two simple parameters here. I'm going to call this title equals uh, dolly uh, combined UI. Uh, I'm going to set the theme to be base, theme equals base. And, and then I'm going to ca call this as combined dolly. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna break this down into two columns. So the way that we do that here is uh, first we need to instantiate the row. So setting the display into two columns. Uh, all right, so the, the, the first we need to instantiate our row. So gr.row uh, and then we are going to setting the display for the first column, okay. All right, so the way we do that is G with gr.column uh, scale. No, I'm not going to put a scale parameter in there right now, but I am just going to put a header on here. So I'm going to put a basic markdown header. So um, um, adding a header for the left side of the UI. I'm going to call this uh, image generation header equals gr dot markdown and oops I didn't mean to do that well did I sorry I am I'm hot it is hot today guys like it is way too freaking hot outside and I'm hot here in my office it's just too hot all right so I'm gonna call this uh image generation uh, or I'm gonna call this dolly image generation dolly image generation and then I'm gonna put please enter a prompt for what you would like dolly to generate and generate and click the generate Emit. Here, let me move my face. I'm going to get in the way, aren't I? All right, let me move my face. Face moved. All right. Um, okay. What am I doing? All right. Generate image. Uh, and click the generate image button to watch Dolly work its magic. All right. Now, all right, so that's the first column with GR... All right, setting the display for the second column. All right, with gr.column. All right, and then we're just copy and paste this here. Basically, I'm just adding another another thing here. So for the right side, right, uh, similar image. than four megabytes uh, to have a dolly generate a gallery of similar uh, images. All right. All right, so that is uh, the very basic start to our UI. So let me go ahead and copy this down here. And I'm going to call this 
Oops. All right. I'm going to call the script invocation, script invocation. So this is when the script gets invoked. All right. So if name equals name. I don't know why uh, that doesn't auto like fill or try to auto fill here in, in uh, VS Code. It did in IntelliJ. It's not a big deal. It just I don't get it. All right, so launching, launching the Gradio. Here we go. All right, and what do we call this thing? We call this combined LAUI dot launch. All right, so this is a very, 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 very simple Gradio UI. It's not doing anything. It's just showing two headers, two columns. But let's go ahead and start it up in debug mode. So the way that we do it in debug mode, here I'm going to clear. All right, so uh, is uh, we have to do because like if you were to just do it normally so you just do like a python 3 like it wouldn't be in debug mode what debug mode do is doing is it's looking at this file and it's constantly refreshing the ui any every time we make an update to it so the way that we do that is we do do radio and we call the name of the file itself and then we have to call the object inside that file so we're gonna again we, we called the object uh combine dolly ui as such all right so then we're going to start that and then that has now been started over here um and you can see now we have, uh, oops, now my face is again in the way, but in a different space. Sorry about that. All right, but you can see that we have our two columns. And I, I wonder if there's a way to put a line in between the columns. Uh, I don't know, but I'm too lazy to figure that out right now. <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, well, I'm sure we'll figure it out. All right, so that is the start of our Gradio UI. All right, so let's work on the left half first. So let's go back to our code. Uh, let's just get, uh, hide that for now. And let's work on the left half. So the first thing that we, all right, what do we need to build? We need to build uh, the text box for the prompt, a button to actually click everything off, and a thing that actually displays the image. So let's go ahead and, and build the, the the UI itself. So, all right, so we're gonna call this uh, text, or adding a text box for the user to submit a prompt. Okay, so we're gonna call this user prompt equal prompt equals uh, gr dot text box um, and then we're gonna add a label to it uh, that's called what would you like to see and then I'm going to add a placeholder some placeholder text placeholder enter some text oh by the way it is only up to a thousand characters up to 1000 characters uh, of what you would like Dolly to generate for you. All right, so now let's go back to our UI. So you can see now we have a, a text box up here in the top left half of the UI uh, that is uh, showing us exactly uh, the, the text box, I guess. All right, so that is, uh, boom, check that done. All right, so adding a but button for the user to click to generate the dolly image. So I'm going to call this uh, generate image button equals gr dot button. And this is why I love Gradio. It is so easy to use Gradio. Like if the very first time I used it, it was a little bit confusing, but now it's like riding a bike. So I'm going to call this the generate image button, generate image. And the, yeah, all right, so there's that button. And then finally we need to add a thing down at the bottom that actually will display the image. So we're gonna call this uh, adding a thing to display the dolly image. A, uh, a thing, <laughs> that's terrible. All right, so doll, I'm gonna call this dolly image. Dolly image equals gr.image. I'm gonna call the label equals uh, dolly generated, generated image. All right, now I'm gonna, I just wanna show something really quick and then I'm gonna come back. So it just refreshed. Now notice here, like the how you, you have what you wanna see. Now there's also a thing here where you can actually upload your own image. We don't want it to do this. So the way that we uh, stop it from doing that is we will set this, uh, interactive parameter equal to false. So by default, it is true. I got to put a thing there. Sorry about that. All right, now if we come back, now it's just gonna show a base thing. 
where you can't really interact with it. It just shows that it's basically there. All right, so that is the UI. That's the UI. All right, so let's define out the behavior for the UI. So the way that we do that is also within this with block, but not under, nested underneath any of these rows or anything. So I'm gonna tab out a little bit. I'm gonna put uh, defining the behavior of uh, what happens when we generate generate image button button is clicked. All right. All right, so the way that we do that is, so all right, we have the, those generate image button that we created. So it is that dot click. And then we will need to pass in uh, some inputs and outputs. So the inputs are, 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 we need to set some parameters. So we need to set a function of what's gonna happen when this thing is clicked. It, and we're gonna call it generate image. Now we have not created this function yet, so don't worry about that too, yet, too much yet. Uh, inputs, now we need to provide this as a list. So the only input that we need is the user prompt prompt um, and then the output is going to be the dolly image so outputs equals the dolly dolly image all right so that is the form of all right so that is what will happen now we need to create a new section in here of the gradio function so I'm gonna call the I'm gonna create a new section in here I'm gonna call this gradio uh, helper functions gradio helper functions all right now let's go ahead and uh, do this. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna be a little bit lazy here. Um, we we know how to write functions. I just don't want to have to write out the same doc string again. All right. So basically, what this is a, a function that generates uh, an image per the user's input. Uh, so it's gonna take in a string and then it's gonna return this pill based image. So all right. So that's and then all right. So let's go ahead and write out what the function is gonna do. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the 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 uh, prompt does not exceed a thousand characters. So checking that the user uh, prompt does not exceed 1000 characters. And the nice thing about Gradio is uh, it will, just like you can raise errors in typical Python, you can raise a UI based error in Python. So, uh, so what this looks like, so if length of user prompt is greater than a thousand, so if it's greater than a thousand characters, raise, uh, this radio error input prompt cannot exceed 1,000 characters. All right. All right. Now let's go ahead. All right. So that's check. Just check, and we'll, and we'll demo this functionality here in a minute. All right. So the next thing that we need to do is using Dolly to generate the image as a base 64 encoded object. So this is not any, this is exactly what we just did a little bit ago in the Jupyter notebook. We're just bringing it out here into Gradio now. So open AI response equals uh, open AI uh, image dot create. Okay, so now we need to pass in the prompt. So prompt equals user prompt. Uh, we only want one. Uh, size, we're going to keep it at 1024 by 1024, 1024, and the response format, we want it to be in uh, that base64 base encoded JSON. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, B64 JSON. All right, so now you think that this next part is going to be complex, but it's a single line of code. I mean, it's two lines just because I had to put up my annotated comment, but it's a single line. It's it's gonna look messy, uh, so let's. But you'll you'll see what we're doing. So we're gonna be decoding uh, the base sixty four encoded object into a pill image. All right, so let's start. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this dolly image equals OpenAI response. Now, if you recall, uh, so our image data is in the data of the so this is a JSON object so it's under the data category and remember data is a, a list of arrays or a list of objects so we need just the first one out of there so zero and then if you recall again we need the base 64 version of that and it's going to be under this b64 JSON right here now so the first thing that we need to do is we need to base 64 decode this thing so we need to do b64 decode on this all right so that's part one 
All right, now we are, so uh, we're, we're moving our, we're starting in and we're moving our way out. So now we have this base64 decoded object. Now recall when it, that I said, in order to use it as a image, like a, a Python pill image, we need it in a bytes IO format. So the way that we do that is we're gonna write, wrap this around here again. So we're doing another wrap. All right, so now we have wrapped it. Now we are in this bytes IO thing, and now we can open it as in a pillow image. So that, rem recall that we uh, loaded in this image from pillow here. So what we're going to do here is wrap this one more time. Image dot open. Boom. Match that up. All right, and then we're going to return the dolly image. All right. Uh, believe it or not, we are now done with part one. So that is that is everything that we need to actually generate this thing. I'm pretty sure. Um, so let's go ahead and test this out. So let's 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 grab something fun from here. Uh, uh, let's grab oh the cat in the spaceship. Yes, cat in the spaceship. Uh, heck yeah. All right. So I'm gonna paste. This is the same UI that we just built. You and I just built live here in our live coding stream. And uh, why is this not going? <laughs> why is it not going? Uh, generate image button dot click. Did I not generate image? All right, dolly image. Did I not spell something right? Uh, what did I not do? I did it just not refresh correctly. Yeah, let's try this again. J. Unexpected word input. Oh, that's why it's uh, inputs. Forgot that S there. Sorry about that. All right, there we go. Now let's do this. All right, so we'll take a little bit here. Let's go ahead and get this thing going. Do 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 do. All right, and yeah. All right, part one, check. All right, so you can see this is how fast and how easy it is to build these things. That's why the it's it's really exciting to do this. Uh, uh, work here and, and what we're at 105 lines and what over half of these are probably just my annotated comments like all right so we can go ahead and start building part two so that is the the uh, comparison thingy all right so all right so we already have the header all right now if you recall so what we need is we need a thing to upload the image we need to uh, another button to generate similar images and then we need an output gallery thing all right so uh, let's here underneath here we're gonna add uh, adding the mechanism to upload a user image so I'm gonna call this user image equals gr dot image label equals image uploader and then we're gonna upload these as the type file path so that is just you don't necessarily need to know that too much. That's just way the way of how Gradio does this this thing, where we can make use of it in this next function that we're going to build. All right, so that's the that's the UI element. So if we come back in here, you can see that we have a thing to actually upload our image. All right, so now we need to add a a button here, adding a button for the user to click to generate similar images to the one uploaded. All right, so the way that we do this is generate similar images, button equals uh, gr dot button, uh, generate similar images, generate similar images. And then uh, we're gonna be adding, adding an output gallery uh, to display the similar images. So I'm going to call this output gallery and we're going to be using an, a new Gradio object type we've not used before but it's pretty simple to use. gr.gallery label equals similar image gallery and I think that's it. All right so let's look at the UI. So the UI is done like the like the actual this is what the, fo the final thing is going to look like. Now again I, I'm curious if we could get a like a, a line break here. I, perhaps there is a way to, I just don't know off the top of my head and we're not gonna figure that out. Uh, but let's, we are actually getting super close to being done with this whole thing. So let's go ahead, similar thing here. So defining the behavior of what happens when the generate 
similar images button. Button is clicked. All right, generate similar images button dot click. We're going to call create a new function called generate simil similar images inputs with an S. All right, this time it's going to be our upload image that we are passing in, and uh, our outputs is going to be the output gallery. All right, oops, but I got to wrap that in some brackets on. All right, left, right. All right, uh, why is this one? Hold on, oh, I meant to call this upload image. Upload image, there we go. All right, so we are done with this section down here. All we need is one last thing. We just need to create another function that is actually gonna generate these images for us. Okay, I'm gonna call this def uh, generate sim similar images and we're gonna take in the upload uh, image, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of lazy gen generate similar images. Is that what I call it? Yeah. All right. So again, I'm being a little bit lazy here. I'm just copying this from my other screen here. So this is just the doc string uh, saying we are going to input this. We're going to return this. Uh, space that out a little bit better. All right. So let's go ahead and write the code here. So what we need to do is basically the exact same thing that we did above, except now we're going to be using this radio thing. So using dull e to generate the image as, uh, oops. Um, using the light to generate similar images compared to the one uploaded by the user. All right, so OpenAI response equals OpenAI dot image dot create variation. All right, image is going to be open the upload image in a read binary format. All right, n equals five, size equals 1024 by 1024, and response format b64 json. Am I not live anymore? Uh-oh, did I lose my connection? Hold on, sorry, I'm just checking. Okay, now it sounds like I'm live. All right, B64, 64 JSON. All right, we're coming up on the end. I know, I, I feel like this has been a more boring stream, but like just because like it's so simple, but like re really this is it. All right, so uh, the way the output gallery works is that you give it a list of images that you want to display. So we're gonna create an empty list to hold these images, creating an empty list to hold all the images for the output gallery. All right, so output gallery equals, all right. And now we are basically gonna be doing the same thing that we did above, except we're gonna be iterating through uh, the response to get all five of the images that it's generating. So uh, iterating through all the images returned by Dolly for image in OpenAI. AI response data. So we're iterating through all these. Appending the dolly generated image to the gallery. All right, so output gallery dot append. All right, so again, I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna get kind of breeze through this now just because like we've, we've already covered this. So we, it, we need to do the byte 64, or we need to do base 64 encoding, we need to decode that to bytes IO and then use it as an image, or, or and then you would use that to actually do the Python pillar image. I am losing the will to speak. All right, all I wanna do is go back and play Zelda. <laughs> all right, so image, and then B64 JSON. All right, all right, so that, is that, too many, too many, uh, nope, I think that's the right amount of things there. All right, returned output gallery. All right, uh, if all went well, we are done. 
All right, so let's let's test this out. In fact, let's test this. I don't know if this is gonna work. Well, actually, let's just test this out just with my car for first, and then and then we'll try something different. All right. All right, so it's gonna generate similar images. Inner gallery. All right, take a minute here. This one takes a little bit longer just because it's doing multiples. All right, so there we go. So again, we got our gallery working. So this is exactly just like we saw earlier. It's interesting that this one actually inverted the car like to where it's like mirrored. Interesting. All right, so let's let's try one more fun one of these from the the gallery. Ooh, I like the colors on this one. The 3D rendering of a pink balloon dog. All right, so let's let's grab this. Let's put it over here on the left. Now, because the, the thing I'm curious about is can I drag this over to here and cre create uh, images, uh, like or v variations of this image here? So let's let's try this out. I actually don't know if this is going to work. It, but if it does, I'm going to be pretty, pretty happy. <laughs> OK, so it generated a 3D rendering. Um, and now it's going to do some variations on this. Hopefully, and if this works, I'm gonna be super thrilled with this. <laughs> okay, so it looks like it's working. Um, oh my freaking goodness! I can't believe that actually worked without me having to do some extra configuration. Wow. Okay, that's cool. All right, all right, all right, and all right. So that everything worked. Um, uh, what what is our final code count? 150 lines, and we could probably take out more than half of these. Uh, like this is probably only. I don't know, 50 or so lines of code. Like, most of this is just my special formatting and comments and stuff. But that is it. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and upload this whole thing right now. Um, uh, well, I don't want to upload the bear. All right, so uploading combine UI. All right, so this is going out to GitHub. All right, so if, if, you, did, if you had struggles following along at all or anything, I'm sending this up to GitHub right now. And... And it should be there any second. All right, so let me let me go ahead and go into GitHub. All right, source. All right, so we combined all UI. And there we go. This is the the exact code that we all just wrote together live here in the Sunday afternoon live stream. All right, uh, let's. I mean, that's really cool. I mean, that's really cool. What I I really love the APIs. I really love Gradio. I really love how simple we just did this thing where we generated an image of, I don't know, uh, like whatever, and then we dragged it over here and we got variations and a gallery, uh, all in less than a hundred lines of code. That's we live, we truly live in a golden age. So, all right, let's call it there. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this. So I will for sure not do a live stream next week because I'm going to be in Chicago, uh, but. One I do really, 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 really want to do is on vector databases, and that might actually be a multiple parter. So, uh, we actually let me take it back. So I'm only gonna be in Chicago Friday through Sunday, and I forgot it's the Fourth of July week. Maybe we'll do something on Monday because I think I'm gonna take Monday off work, uh, just as everybody else in the world is going to <laughs> make it a nice long four day weekend. Uh, but yeah, uh, hope you all enjoyed this one. Uh, apologies that I'm not super high energy. I'm I'm tired, but. We, we made it through. Boom, boom. We, we got it done. We got the job done. And we had some fun. And I'm proud of the output. So, all right. I'm going to call it there. Hope you all have a great weekend. And, uh, yeah. See you in the next one.